Okay. What are we doing? This is a typical position that we put our subjects in by the window and we shoot away. And uh, through the years, I've learned that I really don't think I like the window look too much because it makes people look like, um, kind of like the Godfather when you have like the really scary shot of the half, half shadow and half light and, you know, Whenever we do portraits, uh, especially um, you know any kind of portrait, I don't know why even women sometimes I see people do this, but we're gonna do a couple of things. We're going to show why the window light, um, just using window light, and that's the only light source you have, why that sucks. And then we're gonna compare it by adding a reflector to it and see how that looks, adding a little bit of a reflector for kicker light in order to bring shadow detail here. And then uh, we're going to also use a flash and we're gonna see how a flash can or, or a strobe can help and how the flash looks different than a reflector. So let's say you're at a job and you have window light and you're trying to put your subject there. We're going to, uh, you know, now you have the option of using, should I use a reflector or should I use a flash to bring light into the darker area of the subject. So uh, I'm gonna take some pictures here and see how it goes. Here we are. I'm gonna get this relatively close to the window, the way we normally do it. And let's take a shot of this guy, vertical. Very nice. Now I'll take a horizontal. So as you can see, it's uh, pretty dark and pretty awful on the other side. I don't really like it, especially for women. Now if you're shooting a woman, you can always turn her around like this, and it kind of gives you a cool shape. Yeah, that's very nice, but we're not doing that. We're doing like the split lighting thing. So we're gonna do it that way, and then we're gonna see what it looks like with the reflector. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we changed it up. Now we have a pro photo reflector on the white side. So this is the gold and silver zebra side but we're going to use the, uh, the white side and then we'll compare it to the silver side and see what kind of feel like we get out of that. Let's take a look. Same settings, of course. There's that. And here's the horizontal one. Okay. Just look. Okay, way better. Way better. It's a little bit more detail in there. It's very nice. Let's flip it around. Gold and silver side, same distance. Let's take a look. Okay, we have a gold and silver zebra. Now, this is the gold and silver zebra side, one, good. And then let's take a look at this. All right. Interesting. Now let's go ahead and forget this thing and let's use a flash instead. So we're gonna bounce a flash. Now, I'm in my studio right now. We'll probably bounce, we'll probably make this more realistic We'll bounce the flash all the way to the other side uh, of the studio. So you're talking about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet, something like that. Okay, let's take a look what's going on now. So we have a flash on the table. So we're going to shoot all the way, not even towards that direction. We're gonna shoot all the way against it. So if I turn this around, we're gonna bounce it all the way against that door, against that wall, and then we're gonna bounce it all the way back to that face, okay? So let's see what we can do. First, I will turn this on. Let's see if we can focus. And of course, I'm gonna put this on manual, but I'm going to change the zoom all the way to 200 200, okay, 200 on the zoom. So it has to, as, much, as much throw, as much power as possible. 
because it has to travel such a far distance. And now I'll use the uh, the uh, remote to make, put it on put it on uh, manual flash. So there we are. There is the flash right there. In fact, going to record the flash actually firing. Okay, see how it goes. Let's try to take a look at that. It's kind of a mess with the white angle, but that's okay. Let's take a look. Okay, so the flash is zoomed all the way to 200. I'm gonna turn this on. And then I'm gonna make sure that that is on, um, this is not on high speed sync. And then I need to make sure that that guy over there is in uh, manual. Let's see. We're gonna switch this to wireless on. Okay. Make this A. You're gonna fire all the way against that door. All right, let's do a test. Very nice. Okay. Nice test. All right, let's take a look here uh, let's see here I am going to have to change my settings a little bit you know what let me try high speed sync first okay let me try high speed sync and then that way we don't have to switch the settings at all so we're, st we're still in the same settings high speed sync and then I'm gonna put the uh, power to full power let's take a look because it has to travel so far Amazing, truly amazing. Let me see, I'm gonna turn off the flash real quick. Yeah, that's pretty crap. Um, I'm going to turn this back on. Now, just to see, I'm going to take it off high speed sync. So I'm gonna take it off high speed sync. I'm gonna switch my shutter speed down to 200, uh, so I can, so I can be at the right uh, settings there, and then I'm gonna have to lower my ISO just to see if I can get at the proper exposure. But change. Let's see here. That is crazy. So it looks like. So I changed my settings. I kept my aperture the same. Okay, kept my aperture the same but I changed my settings to ISO 200 from ISO 800, and then my shutter speed went from 750 all the way down to 200, and, um, or I mean to 250, and that looks incredible. So from here, I can actually shoot wide angle or whatever I want. Yep, and that looks incredible, so it looks it looks truly remarkable. Like it looks like there, you, there is a beautiful light coming in and this is exactly what it should look like. Not all dark and crazy on the other side. So this is to me uh, an incredible setup. There is just no excuse for it. There is, uh, you have a flash somewhere pointing away from the subject, bouncing on some wall, bouncing all the way back and the results, the results just speak for themselves. It just looks amazing. Now, one thing we can do in order to lower the, because uh, the flash adds a little warmth to the photo, which actually looks nice, but if you want to keep it um, exactly the same, we can change the white balance a little bit, and we can, actually, I'll go to the white shift bracket, and then I'll bring it down to a little bluer. Let's see how that looks like. White shift bracketing, let's take a look. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that looks amazing. So that looks just like window light. We shifted the white shift bracketing on the, to a little more in the blue side to, to counter, uh, counter the uh, flash warmth. And you have yourself an amazing picture. So, yep, results are flash beats reflector. No matter how you put it, it's just way better. Okay, what's the verdict? The verdict is we tried to do it with 
the mannequin with window light and we saw how it looks beautiful on the side of the window but then it looks typical dark and ugly now keep in mind this is a white room so this is as good as it gets for window light because the window light is reflecting all over the walls however most places that you shoot people in may not have white floors white walls of course they have carpet or they have decor in the walls and that stuff kind of subtracts the amount of bounced reflected light so it would be even darker on the on, on the side away from the window um, we put a big professional beautiful pro photo reflector on the white side to soften the light and it reflected kind of just meh it was just good but it wasn't strong enough light coming in to really make an impact so it didn't really do much it did some but didn't do much then the the third is we flipped the reflector and we made it so it was on the silver gold zebra side and even that was a little bit like meh to me it was okay um i feel like it was bulky it took a lot of space it looked like a it looked like too much like a photo shoot i don't know it just to me was too bulky of a solution the best solution by far was putting a flash like this a single flash i mean this was a single flash it wasn't even like a crazy pro photo strobe like a b1 or anything i mean we're talking about a speed light that's ridiculous anyway, you put a speed light put it on some table bed whatever we bounced it like literally 50 60 feet in the opposite direction of the window then it had to travel all the way back towards the mannequin and hit and hit Paco all the way in the window okay and one flash did it that's it and then the last thing we did was um, not only did it look totally natural and beautiful it didn't look like a flash at all because the light bounced against a huge wall so it bounced back very broadly so it, but it had a lot of power so even though this is only 50 watt seconds it had enough power to go into a huge room bounced all the way back and still illuminate the subject with uh back up here with beautiful beautiful light and it made it look impeccable the cool part is uh because flash adds a little bit of warmth we i went to the color shift matrix to the color shift menu and i was able to um i decreased I, I turned a little dot towards the blue side instead of towards the middle where it was before that blue little dot on that little matrix that shows up i by turning it more towards blue it counter it countered the uh the warmth of the flash so if you really really want to make it look like pure window light and nothing there was no look flash at all sometimes that little warmth is a telltale sign the flash was used but if you turn that white shift uh dot to the blue side by three 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 notches just three little dots to the left side you remove all doubt that a flash was used because nobody can tell because it looks just like window light uh natural light no flash uh sometimes when people show me a photo they're like no flash was used i'm like yeah flash was used because you can tell by the color but um if they were to do that little trick i couldn't tell either so anyway that's it for now i hope you enjoyed it that was a fun little exercise and um, if you feel like subscribing i'm gonna keep doing these fun exercises for curious photographers that want to keep uh figuring out what happens if um, you can follow me on instagram at roberto underscore photo this is my channel for youtube you can subscribe to it if you will if you would like it'll be fun and uh, please leave any comments let me know if these things are fun for you they're worth it they're kind of a lot of work to do so I, it will be fun to see what people think and uh, it is just pure uh, joy for me to be able to do this and i hope you guys get a lot out of it and it helps you and um, it helps you motivate you and helps you do a better job with uh, whoever you're shooting so thanks for watching guys we'll see you soon see you next time take care bye